1939 film Wizard of Oz, adapted from a children's book by L. Frank Baum and starring Judy Garland, Frank Morgan, Ray Bolger, and Margaret Hamilton, is widely considered to be a classic. It was nominated for six Academy Awards, including Best Picture, but lost to Gone with the Wind. It did win two other categories, including Best Original Song for Over the Rainbow and Best Original Score. Even today, the film still holds up quite well and is studied by cinephiles around the world. It has become the impetus for much online debate, as some question the motives of the character. Namely, was Dorothy brought in to act as a hit woman for Glenda the Good Witch, who is making a power play to rule Oz? Does the movie sync up with Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon? Did one of the extras actually hang himself? And did that scene make it into the movie by mistake? And what to make of the various Mandela effects noticed by people, namely the Scarecrow's gun and the line, Fly my pretties fly, which doesn't seem to exist. For those who haven't seen it, the film involves a young girl named Dorothy being transported from her Kansas farm along with her dog Toto to a mysterious world called Oz, where she meets up with a wild collection of characters including dancing scarecrows, tin woodsmen, lion men, apple throwing trees, flying monkeys, and good and evil witches. As a paranormal enthusiast, I found myself while watching the film, wondering if it was possible that the weird assortment of beings encountered by Dorothy in what was essentially her dream world, Oz, might actually exist in our real world in paranormal literature. In this video, I will present actual case reports in which people claim to have observed the very same type of beings encountered by Dorothy, except in this case, these encounters are supposedly true. On the night of August 30th, 2005, several villagers in Hai Nam Rak in Maijan District's Tambon Janjawa, Thailand, watched as a fiery ball floated overhead, eventually landing in the wide green rice field belonging to 69-year-old Thai Kikanbon. The very next morning at around 6.30 a.m., villagers began noticing a very strange figure standing in Thai's field in the same area where the fireball was seen to land. To them, it looked like a doll, standing around one meter in height. Its body was light yellow. It had large eyes, large ears, no mouth, no arms, and skinny legs. Many villagers assumed initially that the entity was just a scarecrow that had been placed in the field by Ty sometime in the night. However, things would take a very strange turn when the scarecrow began moving around on its own. Nearly a dozen villagers witnessed the event, which has been nicknamed by the media as the Thailand Rice Field Scarecrow Incident. Bopan Lewicki was one of the first to see the entity around that morning. She noted that it had a large round head that looked like a light bulb, red eyes, and yellowish skin. She watched it for several hours. Bokan Intuang, 59, said she initially thought the being was a doll, but found it odd that it could move around. Sewing Von Ratchesack, 51, a resident of the village, claimed that he was not drunk and not using drugs when he witnessed the being. To him, it somewhat resembled a scarecrow, and he did not take it that seriously until a friend alerted him to the fact that the entity had floated away and disappeared. Another villager Kama Pinsimoon, 56, also believed that the entity was a scarecrow used to keep the ducks away, but as he watched it, he noticed that it was moving. That's when he realized that it was not a scarecrow at all, but something living. The being, whatever it was, seemed focused on his task and did not acknowledge the villagers. Kama continued to watch until 10.30 a.m. when the entity stretched out, floated above an electricity pole into the sky, turned black and disappeared like a soaring rocket. The witnesses were shocked. Many of the villagers gathered to discuss what they had observed. Some believed the entity might have been an alien like that in Hollywood movies. Unfortunately, the villagers did not have a camera to photograph the incident. They sketched the entity they saw, which looked almost like a cartoon character. Bopan claimed that for many nights, villagers would avoid that field for fear of being taken. Colonel Kitson Kong Taiwapin, superintendent of Maijan District Police, 
investigated and could not find any evidence of the being. There was no trace of the rice being damaged and no footprints. Police officers were assigned to watch the scene due to the several hundred visitors that had flocked to the area. The mayor even set up a camera to watch the area in case the scarecrow returned. Maijan District Chief Wissit Sisanabat interviewed over 10 villagers and they consistently testified about sighting the being. Even Yongyat Tairapat, Minister of Natural Resources and Environment, commented on the incident insisting that he did not know what exactly had been witnessed by the villagers. Conveniently, a man named Tongman Pashalut stepped forward at the height of the media frenzy claiming that the being sighted by the villagers may have been his inflated doll, which had floated away in late August. He had been using the doll to scare away ducks on his farm and it had been taken away during a storm. He presented a sketch of the doll to the media. While authorities and skeptics were happy to file away the Ricefield Scarecrow incident as solved, a simple case of misidentification, many eyewitnesses resisted. First, Tongman's doll had arms and legs, but the being they sighted only had legs. Second, his doll had a mouth but no ears, whereas the being they sighted had ears but no mouth. Of course, skeptics and authorities were only too willing to overlook these discrepancies. To many people, the Thailand rice field scarecrow incident is unsolved. A few years ago in Kentucky, specifically in the trap area, there were sightings of scarecrows walking around in people's fields at night. In one instance, a scarecrow was said to have looked in the window at a young girl as she lay in bed one night. Granted, these creepy scarecrows most likely have a non-paranormal explanation. On the other hand, there are numerous accounts of ghostly scarecrows that can be found, so who knows. On May 1st, 1977, a person living in Shelton, Washington, observed a very strange sight. Now an adult, the witness recalled that when they were around five years old, they were staying with their grandparents in Shelton. At dawn, they got up to watch some cartoons in the living room. As they entered the room, they saw a strange being standing there about 30 feet away. The witness recalled that it was dull or matte silver in color and looked something like the Tin Woodsman from The Wizard of Oz. It stood about four feet tall. They were able to estimate its height as it was standing in front of the refrigerator and was taller than they were in relation to the door of the refrigerator, but not as tall as a full-grown person would be. When I saw it, it stood motionless. I could see it was wearing what looked like a suit, but the material did not appear to be cloth and did not wrinkle. It looked kind of like a robot, but without any eyes. Anyway, after a very long and uncomfortable pause of us staring at one another, it lifted a hand up in the air. Though I did not sense any malice, its gesture did not make me feel comfortable, and I immediately turned and ran back into my grandparents' room and hid between them. I did not leave the room until three or four hours after they got up. The witness would wait nearly 30 years to tell his story. When he eventually told his grandfather, he was surprised to discover that the grandfather had a story of his own. Back in the 1960s, he and two logging crews watched as a 45-foot disc hovered overhead for 15 minutes while they ate lunch at Camp Govey Logging Camp in the Olympic Mountains. A local baseball coach named Jack Mulligan was at Govey on that day and also observed the event. It is unclear if the two incidents were connected. While most people with an interest in ufology will have heard of the Greys, the Tall Whites, the Nordics, and the Reptilians, there is another race which is cited in some reports, nicknamed the Felines, a race of beings said to resemble lions. According to abductees, these beings walk upright and can speak, not unlike what was depicted in the film Wizard of Oz. The most famous of such cases happened in Brisbane, in Queensland, Australia, and was investigated by Emma Durdak for the Australian UFO Research Network. It was September 25, 2005, at around 6 p.m. A man named Chris, 50 years old, had just attended a conference. As he walked down some stairs, he saw a friend standing by an elevator and was making his way over to talk to him when things got very, very strange. Out of the corner of his eye, Chris saw somebody walking almost right next to him. Chris was shocked as they appeared to come out of nowhere. He exclaimed, oh my God, to which the person, which wasn't a person at all, said, are you talking to me? 
I can't talk now. We'll talk later. The sighting was fleeting, lasting only a few seconds, with the being seemingly disappearing after Chris looked away momentarily. According to Chris, the entity appeared to be six feet tall with a powerful presence and with a tawny golden hair or mane around his head. His face was lion-like. With that, everything seemed to slip away for Chris. His next conscious memory was waking up in his van, which was curiously parked near the Prince Alfred Hospital in Brisbane. It was now 10.30 in the evening. Try as he might, Chris simply could not account for the four and a half hours of lost time. When he woke up, he was exhausted, confused, and lightheaded. One of his eyes was causing him some pain. When he looked at it in the mirror, he noticed that it was quite bloodshot. He also found his car keys in his right-hand pocket, which he found odd as he always placed his keys in his left-hand pocket. Concerned, Chris went to the hospital about his eye, and the doctor who examined him wondered if he had injured it while arc welding. Of course, Chris had never done arc welding, so he knew it wasn't that. In the end, Chris had no explanation for his missing time or who, or rather what, the strange lion man had done to him. He found the whole event quite disturbing, and afterwards he had trouble sleeping. When asked about undergoing hypnosis to recover the memories of that space of missing time, Chris declined, as he was too afraid of what he might remember. Another type of lion man reported, this one less friendly, has also been sighted in Brazil. On January 10, 2005, the same year as the scarecrow sightings in Thailand, people in Sao Jo Nepasino, Mene Jure, began reporting a bizarre creature that resembled a bipedal lion or lion man, which was killing farm animals, including at least one steer. A local civil defense official, Enaldo Mario Pereira, spoke publicly about the killings, noting that the police were looking for the mystery creature which seemed to leave puncture marks on the necks of the animals it attacked. It also drained the animals of their blood. It is unclear if the authorities ever managed to track down this creature. In one of my previous videos, I talked about a case involving a man who turned into a tree. I also mentioned how there were reports of trees seemingly walking around, not unlike what was depicted in movies like Lord of the Rings and Wizard of Oz. In 2011, a woman living in eastern United States claims one night during a storm, she saw branches from a tree whipping close by her window screen. She thought for a moment and realized there were no trees outside that window. There had never been a tree in front of that window, but there, in front of the window, stood a tree blowing in the wind as if it had always been there. She found this odd as the storm wasn't strong enough to plant a full-grown tree in front of her window, but there it was. She became quite spooked by this and quickly pulled down the shades and went to bed. The very next morning, she went out to the yard to have a look and as she suspected, there was no tree, only a pile of branches. She looked around the area and found no sign of the tree, not in a neighbor's yard, not in the street, not anywhere. To the woman, it was as if a tree had showed up outside her window, then got up and walked away. Curiously, the area in which she lives is also home to the rumor of a phantom scarecrow which is said to stalk the cornfields at night. The Western Bigfoot Society newsletter also had a strange tree man story that happened in August 1995 at Sierra Ski Ranch in Oakhurst in California. According to the report, three men camping had set off to do some night hiking at around 2 a.m. As they wandered down a windy road near their campsite, they began to hear strange rustling in the trees and the rattling of bushes. One of the men pointed his flashlight at the tree where all the commotion was coming from and quickly received the shock of his life. Next to the tree he was pointing his flashlight at stood something else, something far outside of his scope of reason. To the witness, it appeared to be a man made entirely out of bark. The entity, standing about 20 feet tall, had long limbs with greenery growing out of them. Needless to say, the men rushed back to camp and got the heck out of there. Walking tree people have also been reported in Florida in the late 2000s and in June 2015 in South Mountain State Park in North Carolina on the trail to Chestnut Knob. Covered with acres of unexplored rainforest, the little-known Indonesian island of Saram, the second largest island in the Malacca's group, is said to be home to a strange winged primate known as the Orang Batty. Orang Batty, also referred to as flying monkeys by some researchers, translates from the indigenous language of the Moluccans as men with wings. Since as far back as the 1500s, the Moluccans have told Christian missionaries 
horrifying stories about these nocturnal airborne predators. Said to be quite vicious, they have been known to swoop in and kidnap and carry away infants, small children, and even pets during their nighttime raids on native villages, not unlike the nighttime raid on Dorothy and her friends as depicted in the film Wizard of Oz. The people of Saran describe them as standing approximately five feet in height with black, leathery wings, red skin, and a long, thin tail. In 1987, English missionary Tyson Hughes began an 18-month contract to assist the Moroccan tribes people of Saram Island to develop more efficient farms. Upon arriving, Tyson began hearing about the Orang Batty and found the stories to be quite interesting, if not silly. It would sometimes refer to them when speaking to people back home. Hughes would change his tune, however, when, about midway through his contract, he looked up one night to see, with his own eyes, one of these flying monkeys hovering overhead. He was shocked at what he was seeing. He simply could not believe they existed. The experience would forever change him. Afterwards, he became less dismissive of the villagers' claims, and he even began to chronicle the various accounts of the unusual beasts in a journal. Let me preface this by saying that I'm in no way knocking anyone's religious beliefs, so please don't be offended, as that is not my intent. Further, I'm certain most people realize that those who identify as witches aren't riding around on brooms and avoiding water for fear they will be melted, as was depicted in the movie Wizard of Oz. On the other hand, paranormal literature does include a decent number of cases in which people claim to encounter beings that they believe are witches, capable of sorcery and magic, as depicted in movies and TV shows like The Craft, Bewitch, and of course Wizard of Oz and in comics like Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Prominent American sportscaster Ahmad Rashad claims that he had a bizarre run-in with a good witch numerous times in his life, a story he shared on a 2011 episode of Celebrity Ghost Stories. One of the most frightening witch stories occurred in Mexico. It was 3.15 a.m. Friday, January 16, 2004. Police officer Leonardo Samango from Guadalupe, Nuevo León, Mexico, was driving around in his patrol car in Colonia Valles de la Silla. It was cold and dark that night, and the streets were empty. As Samango turned his vehicle onto Alamo Street, he immediately noticed something very unusual. A huge black object seemed to fall from a tree beside the street, but it stopped just before touching the ground, and then slowly landed and turned itself to face the patrol car. At that moment, Officer Samango knew that something was very wrong. He flipped on the high beams of his car to try to get a better look, and that's when Samango's nightmare began. It was a woman, all dressed in black, that fell from the tree, but she didn't touch the ground, just remained floating several feet from the ground. I saw her very well, and then she landed softly on the ground and stood there looking at me. She was trying to cover her face from the lights of the car. I think they were bothering her. I could see two big black eyes on her completely black without eyelids and her skin was dark brown she was all dressed in black with cloak and cape like a witch and she seemed very upset by the lights even before Samengo had time to process what he was seeing the scene turned into utter chaos within seconds the entity had jumped over to and onto Samengo's patrol car like a crazed animal it ferociously tried to attack him the shocked police officer couldn't believe or understand what he was seeing and punched his gas, driving away in reverse while shouting desperately for backup on his radio. He watched as a female being tried to grab at him with her hands right through the car's windshield. Only a few centimeters of windshield separated her from the officer. It was at this moment that Samango got his best visual look at the being that he described as a witch. It was a woman with big black eyes. Everything was black, no eyelids. Her skin was dark brown and her expression was horrible. She was furiously trying to get me with her claws while I was running away in reverse calling desperately for backup assistance to any units around. When I finally hit the end of the street, I was so shocked that I covered my eyes and then I fainted. Samango lost consciousness after he covered his eyes, trying not to see the frightening being still glued to the windshield trying to get at him. Some researchers believe that the severe amount of stress may have caused him to pass out. Within minutes, two police units arrived, as well as an ambulance that was nearby. When they got to the patrol car, they found Officer Samango unconscious, 
Fortunately, he was not injured, perhaps due to the fact that he never abandoned the car during the incident. After several minutes, he regained consciousness and was attended to by paramedics at the ambulance. A TV camera crew had also arrived with a police unit and they recorded Officer Samango's first interview just minutes after he felt calmed enough during the interrogation by his police colleagues. All this occurred at the same place of the bizarre incident. Officer Samango was adamant that he saw what he saw, insisting that the being was a witch that could fly and that she had attempted to attack him. An extensive search was done around the area by police units trying to find any tracks or evidence of the mysterious female being, but nothing was found. The ambulance took Officer Samango to the hospital for a medical evaluation and he remained there all day. The Secretary of Public Security of Guadalupe, Mr. Hamlet Castillo Garcia, informed that the drug test as well as other examinations were conducted on Officer Samango to check for any toxic substances in his body like alcohol or any kind of drug. All tests came back negative. Also, Dr. Elmendo Perez Rodriguez, who is a coordinator of medical services in the hospital, informed that after several psychiatric and psychological examinations, they found that Officer Samango was mentally and physically healthy. Guadalupe Mayor Juan Francisco Rivera attempted to explain it away as a hallucination brought on by stress. Two local TV channels, 2 and 34, took the story seriously and covered the case in great detail spanning over several nights. The various stations began receiving hundreds of similar reports from people in the area that also claimed to have seen a mysterious black being flying over their homes. A police officer from Santa Catarina, George Contreras, declared that he and two more policemen from the Regia police saw exactly the same flying being that Officer Samango saw but three days before. They saw it flying and decided not to say anything for fear of ridicule but came forward after the case was covered in the news. Norma Alicia Herrera, who lives in Colonia La Paya, declared in a TV interview that she and her brother also saw the being flying at daytime and that it looked weird. She said that her brother was so stunned by the sighting that he was sick for almost a week afterwards. Norma Hernandez, 22, came forward also claiming to have seen a black figure similar to what the officer had seen only two weeks prior to his encounter. Hernandez told the press that she had been doing laundry and hanging clothes out to dry when she became aware of a black form flying near her house. Frightened, the young housewife set aside her clothes and ran into the house to alert her husband, who scoffed at the suggestion. By the time Norma went outside again, the entity was gone. It was the size of a person, she said. That's what frightened me the most. Hernandez's sighting was corroborated by Safira Gutierrez, another resident of Colonia La Paya, who remarked that several years earlier, he too had seen a black colored shape flying over his street. On May 17, 2006, in the northern area of Cerro de la Mitras, Diana Perla Chapa and Jose Ramon Villarreal left a meeting and watched as a strange entity floated across the sky. Diana managed to record the entity with her video camera. The object, which looks somewhat like a witch riding a broomstick, appears to move in parallel with the mountaintop in a straight line. It appears to fly at a constant speed, always at the same altitude, eventually making a sudden 90 degree movement, heading towards Cerro de la Silla, flying from north to south, and subsequently from south to east. During a close-up of the image, researchers noted that the being appears to have a dog or a sheep in its hands. Witnesses state that total silence reigned over the area, not even crickets were audible, as she flew over. Some believe that the video is a hoax or that the object is merely a type of drone. The footage is commonly referred to as the Witch of Monterey. Another officer, Gerardo Garza, came forward to tell of his encounter with a pair of witches near Pantheon Municipal Cemetery. I was inside the guardhouse when I heard the sound of pebbles being thrown against the door. I went outside to see what was going on, and it was then I saw two witches with faces like old women with red eyes and black hats tipped backward. They had feathered wings and claws on the ends of those extremities. They began laughing horribly, and I got back into the guardhouse and saw what they were doing through a peephole. They were flying in circles, so I reported the situation to my fellow officers. Garza immediately requested backup, and in a matter of minutes was surrounded by several municipal police cars, even some from the ministerial police. The witches flew off, but the police officers who came to my aid saw what I saw. They can attest to the fact that I didn't imagine anything what I saw was real. I'd never been so scared before.